Hi everyone, Mike here. This time I'll be painting Chromatis from Green Horde. Some of you might remember my Chromatis as a nightmare video, and I wanted the undead version to be complementary to that. After priming the model with Corax White, I'm going to mix up a flesh color to use on the muscles. I'm going with Tuscor Fur, and I'm adding a bit of Death World Forest to it to make it a little less vibrant. Now somehow I lost some of this footage, so I am sorry about that, but you can see here that I'm painting all of the exposed flesh with this color. I'm also putting this color between gaps in the bones. That way it looks like there's meaty tissue holding everything together. I'm not worried about being messy with this color. It can't hurt to have a little overspill onto the hide or the bones. The next color I'm using is Beast Hide for the Guts. If you don't have this color, just mix a bit of brown with a light flesh color or use some other flesh color that contrasts well with the muscles. Next I'm painting all of the bones. Just pick your favorite bone color for this part. I'm using a 50-50 mix of World War II beige and ivory, just because I had a specific color in my mind and I didn't have it in my paint range. In some places it's hard to tell where flesh ends and bone starts, but that's okay. I'm just using my best guess and occasionally checking the character art. It's a zombie after all, so it's supposed to look a bit messy. Here's how the undead Chromatis is looking so far. Next, I'm going to paint the hide. I'll be using a dark grey for this part, German grey from Vallejo. I'm starting to take my time now. I don't really want this colour getting on to the lighter ones. I'm also covering up some of the flesh with this and leaving a bit at the edges to kind of make it look like the hide was torn away. That's all the base colors done, except for the hair. I'm saving the hair until the end. Next, I'm going to put a wash over the bones and muscles. The muscles are getting a 50-50 mix of Carolberg Crimson and Agrax Earthshade. And don't worry too much about getting this onto the bones or the hide. That can be cleaned up when we do the highlights. While that wash is still wet, I'm switching to pure Agrax Earthshade and I'm putting this over the bones. This way I can blend the edges together a bit where the two washes meet. The first highlight color will be a 2 to 1 mix of Tuscor Fur and Kislev Flesh. I'm thinning this down with an equal amount of water. I'm adding one layer to all the raised parts of the muscles. After I've added one layer, I'm going to go back and add a second and third layer to the part of each muscle that is closest to the top of the body. Each time I add a new layer, I'm covering a smaller area and moving the highlight upward. Next I'm going to highlight the hide and you can do this in two ways. You can first put on a black wash and then use your highlight color or you can do it this way. I'm first adding a thin layer of Incubi Darkness to the top part of each muscle and leaving the recesses unpainted. Just like with the muscle fibers, I'm adding a second and third layer and making each layer smaller and closer to the top of the body. Once that's done, my second step is to add a black wash into the recesses. I'm actually going to use a black contrast paint for this. If you get a bit in a place you don't want, just wipe it away with your finger or a damp brush before it dries. Next I'm using the same bone color as before for the highlights on the bones, but I've put a tiny bit more ivory into the mix. Whatever bone color you used, you can just add a bit more white to it. Once again, this is thinned down with an equal amount of water. For the ribs, I'm only adding this color to the sides. The ribs under the body are staying dark from the wash. 
For the rest of the bones, I'm just picking out the raised edges and the tips that are poking out. I'm also edge highlighting around the skull and picking out the teeth. Next, I'm going to highlight the guts with a roughly equal mix of Kislev Flesh and Beast Hide. Again, if you don't have Beast Hide, just add a lighter flesh color or beige to whatever color you had used before. I'm using this on the lowest hanging parts of the intestines that are sticking out. Next is the hair. First, I'm cleaning up all the spots I accidentally hit with any other colors with a heavy white. And then I'm completely covering all of the hair with my brightest white. If you have a white brush on primer, you can use that as well. And of course, just as I start the hair, I realize this steed has ears. So I'm quickly painting those with a German grey and giving them a quick highlight with the Incubi Darkness. I'm also going to paint the center of each eye socket with white. Now the hair color I'm going with is purple, though I think green or blue would also look cool. You can do the exact same thing I'm doing with a light and dark version of those colors as well. First I put out some of the white and then the light purple. I'm mixing a middle tone and then I'm going to add the dark purple. I'm mixing a middle color between the light and dark purples and then I'm putting down some black. And finally I'm mixing a middle color between the dark purple and black. So I didn't do any wet blending on this part, just adding one or two layers of each color and every time I go to a darker color I move further along the hair. I'm starting out by painting all of the hair the super light pink color that is one step away from the white. Now I'm moving to the light purple and this is thinned down quite a bit with water. I don't want it too overpowering at the start. I'm leaving a bit of a light pink at the base of the hair and painting on two layers of this color. Each layer will be slightly further along the hair. Notice too that I'm always moving my brush away from the body. If you find that the change from one color to the next is super noticeable, just switch back to the lighter color and brush a thin layer over where the two colors meet. So at this point I'm using the middle color between the light and dark purples, and I'm about halfway along the hair. Make sure that as you switch to the next darkest purple that you paint all of the hair from where you start down to the tip of the hair. Next I'm using the pure dark purple and I'm painting the last 25% or so of the hair with this. The last two colors, the black and purple mix and the pure black are just going on the very tips of the hair. The tail is a bit of an exception just because it's so long. The next thing to do is the eyes. I'm just going to do a simple orange glow for the eye, starting with a thin glaze of blazing ink from P3 over the white of the eye. Then I'm putting on about three layers of fluorescent orange from Vallejo in a ring around the white of the eye, leaving a little bit of black around the white itself. This is a pretty subtle effect and you could certainly add a few more layers if you want the glow more noticeable. The final step is to add a bit of dried blood. I'm using 50-50 Mephiston Red and Rhinox Hide. This is going in all the places where the bone meets the flesh or anywhere that needs some touching up but you really don't want to get those old colors back out. Just splash some dried blood on there, problem solved. I won't bore you with the base, it's exactly the same as my massive darkness bases, just random bricks painted with a few different shades of grey. Finally, I'm painting the rim of the base and spraying the whole model with a matte varnish. And there you have it, Chromatids, or at least my version of Chromatids. This was a patron-voted model, so I hope you guys like it. 
On that note, thank you to all my patrons for supporting the channel, and a special thanks to Brian Jones. If you want to see the living version of Chromatis painted as a nightmare, you should see the link for that appear any second. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments section below, and thanks for watching.